This will be the final slide for this course. And it has to do with cost reduction method in education. What are the methods we can use to reduce cost? Before we go into that, let's look at the cost determinants in education. What are the things that the factors that determine the cost in education? One, the first major one is the average class. The average class size would determine the cost of education. If in a particular level, let's say primary school, you are saying no more than 40 pupils in a class, it means you have the maximum seating capacity of 40 in a class and the class will be built to take that maximum capacity. Remember, in this maximum capacity seating, there is a space that is allocated to a particular student. There is size of the space that a particular student needs to sit. So you need to build in this to know how much will be required to take care of S and Y number of student enrollment in a state, in a region, in a country, and so on. So if the class size is not sorted out, you won't be able to have adequate projection. Instead, you might have over or under <clears throat> facility for the student to utilize. Then the same goes with the uh, building laboratory, building uh, classroom, workshop, and other things. Now, let us look at the average cost of classroom construction. Now, when you are considering the average cost of classroom, or you have not the number of students that are going to sit in there, then you have to consider the, how much will be used. Now, we have to determine the type of structure that will be there because one structure may differ from the other and therefore bring differences in price. Then you look at the student-teacher ratio. The student-teacher ratio and the average class size, they work closely together because if you say, well, you're going to have 40, especially if it's in a primary school whereby you have a teacher attached to a particular class and it's not changed, but if it has to do with subject-wise, if you are doing it subject-wise, then the student-teacher ratio will become very, very vital. How many students will be in the class for a teacher to teach, in the lab for a student uh, to a teacher to attend to? So you need to work out that and take it into consideration to know how much will be required. Now we know have the teacher salary qualification and experience. Remember, the salaries differ according to qualification and experience of the teachers. Then we have the school size. The, how large is the school? A school that is having 1,000 students is different from a school that is having 200 students. Again, if you have 200 students, you have 1,000 students, you need to provide facilities that will take care of 1,000. At the time you are providing facilities that will take care of water, that will be equal equal quality, providing equal quality, equal everything, it, it means that you are going to spend more money to provide facility for 1,000 students than providing uh, the one for 200 students. So you have to look at the school side. Now, what are the cost reduction mechanism techniques that we can use in education? One, the average class size. Now, if you want to reduce cost, there are, instead of making your class size to be 15 per class, you make it up to 40. But if you make it 15, remember, it would be easier for the teacher to reach every student in the class. By the time you make it up to 40, it will be a little bit difficult. And if it's more than that, maybe you're manageable. So, however, while you are trying to reduce cost, also consider the quality of the education that will come out of your teaching and learning that will come out of it. Now, you could work on the average cost of classroom construction. Now, the average uh, cost of classroom construction instead of using ties maybe you say oh uh, we need to put in ties if you put in ties it's going to cost you more money but if you just ordinary flooring with cement and sand you cost you less money again don't uh, compromise quality but then providing ac in the classroom and providing fan in the classroom is going to give you different amounts so you can reduce cost if you feel you cannot get that now you look at uh, student teacher ratio now let's assume in the use of laboratory, you can say, well, if we make it uh, 20 to one teacher, 20 students to one teacher, you know, we're going to build more laboratories and we don't have that. Okay, let's increase it. To use this lab, it will have to be 35 to one teacher. So with that, you are reducing cost. But again, I kept saying, why reducing cost do not compromise the quality? Now, teacher salary and allowances. Teacher salary allowances, how much allowance are you going to pay? You might decide to reduce, but again, over reduction may lead to chaos 
in the teaching line now what do you do you have to be mindful of what you reduce and you have to be mindful of what ensure that whatever thing you give be consistent and be able to pay it is very very vital now the school size again if you have a large school size then you might not be able to manage but let's assume we have a state and we are saying especially at the primary level we are agitating that all children should go to school all children of school age should go to school and now you want to reduce the school set if you reduce the school set means some children will be cut off schooling so if some children are going to be cut off schooling therefore you need to work on the school size and at the same time remember that you need to provide access so in trying to balance to reduce cost again do not over reduce cost and create another problem then we have the mode of teaching and learning this is new and again it will help to really reduce cost if you want to reduce cost like the last one we're looking at the school sites we're looking at the assets that will come in and again here with the mode of teaching and learning can help you have more access and what mode could this be encourage e-learning encourage e-learning that could be through home studies there will be some that will be able to learn online that will be able to follow online encourage it why you do that it means you will build less classroom you will have less instructor now what you could do again if it's in the university let's assume you are having uh, you are considering reducing cost of teaching in the university one thing you could do if you encourage a learning then it will reduce the amount of qualified staff that you need to employ if you have one qualified or two qualified professor in a field and you are using a learning you work together you uh, use oero because oero too you will be able to share then open educational resources you'll be able to share that knowledge across board and in the process of sharing you are able to reach larger number of students and university could form consortium if i have a qualified professor in this place you have a qualified professor in university why don't we come together and produce something that all students can use so if you use this it will help to reduce cost than working with everybody every institution wanting to have everything that it needs in that uh, institution so we're going to Stop here and uh, I wish you the best in your course.